Welcome to week four. This week our discussion is about evolution and extinction. The signature of two very different extinction mechanisms appears evident in the fossil record. First is background extinction, the second is mass extinction. Background extinction is the result of biotic interactions, both ecological and evolutionary, gradually changing climates and landscapes, and in the case of small populations, chance. Like the death of individuals, extinction is a natural part of life's ebb and, ebb and flow. Populations naturally fluctuate over time. And this chart gives you some idea of how that can happen where it can reach a maximum, it can crash, or conditions can change to cause it to crash, and at some point it is no longer viable and cannot reproduce and goes extinct. Extinction within a region happens following a perturbation rate at which species form increases, then levels off or even decreases as all the ecological niches become filled. At the same time, extinction rates continue to rise as species are forced into ever more narrow ways of life. The system reaches an equi equilibrium at a number of certain number of that species. And on this graph, you see the rate versus the number of species. And it's showing you an extinction rate, a speciation rate, and where they come together is the equilibrium. 99% of all species that have ever existed on the Earth are now gone. Scientists have found that the normal species extinction rate on a geological time scale is one species every 10,000 years. Based on the fossil record, most species exist for 4 to 22 million years. Mass extinction events. Many fish species became extinct near the beginning of the Devonian period, 409 million years ago. 90% of marine species and several terrestrial organisms became extinct at the end of the Permian period, 245 million years ago. The end of the Cretaceous era, 65 million years ago, when dinosaurs went extinct. And the Pleistocene, 1.8 million years ago, many grazing animals went extinct, such as the saber-toothed cats and woolly mammoth. The causes of mass extinctions were one, the climate changes in climate always result in changes in the biota. For example, the Pleistocene glaciation resulted in significant extinction of grazing animals in North America and Eurasia, but not in Africa and portions of South America. Another cause was meteorite, the impact of a large or numerous meteorites. And this happened at the end of the Cretaceous era, probably caused by meteorite hitting the earth near Yucatan Iridium layer, layer found at the same level all around the Earth indicates that's what happened. Glaciation causes severe decrease in temperature and sea level drop. Meteorite caused extinction, and this shows you the Yucatan Peninsula and where we believe today that meteorite hit and the impacts of it. The Cretaceous extinction, a meteorite, meteorite caused so much dust as to block out the sun, causing temperature drop and decreased plant growth. The prevailing theory is that this caused the Cretaceous mass extinction. It created opportunities because following a mass extinction, there is a rapid increase in species as the survivors speciate to fill the vacated niches. For example, Mammals were mostly small and nocturnal for 75 million years, but diversified into many larger and diurnal forms once the dinosaurs went extinct. And here's the same chart that you see saw before showing extinction within a region, and it shows you the balance between speciation and extinction at equilibrium. Human-induced extinction. Lots of examples of that. Currently, passenger pigeons, um, almost uh, the American bison, quite a few species, the causes of extinction, and what organisms and which areas are most at risk. So the passenger pigeon. In the early 1800s, billions of passenger pigeons could be found in North America. The birds were killed by the millions by people. The last one died in a zoo in 1914. 
The dodo bird was seen in Europeans in 1507, but was extinct by 1681. Forest clearing destroyed its habitat, introduced pigs, goats, cats, rat, rats, monkeys, which became competitors and predators. The Banff long-nosed dace was found only in Banff National Park in a marsh into which the cave and basin hot springs drain was killed off by the introduction of tropical fishes, leakage of chlorine from a swimming pool into the marsh, and construction of the beaver dam. The West African black rhino in 2006, they did intensive surveys trying to find any West African black rhinos in the last refuges in Cameroon. After 48 field missions, no signs were found of their continued presence, although evidence of earlier poaching was still there. Habitat destruction, overexploitation, introduction of pests, predators, and competitors are all causes of extinction, and it has a domino effect. So when you lose a species like the lobelia tree in Hawaii, um, then the native nectar feeding birds also decline. The magnitude of human induced mass extinction, normal species extinction rate on a geological time scale is one species every 10,000 years. By 1950, this rate had increased to one species every 10 years. Today, the rate is estimated at one or more species per day. And here's a picture of the golden toad extinct in 2007 in Costa Rica. Among the casualties, more than half of the 266 species of exclusively freshwater fishes in Malaysia, all of the 11 native tree snail species of Moria in the Society Islands, more than 90 plant species growing on a single mountain ridge in Ecuador because of clear cutting of the forest between 78 and 86. And here is the Hawaiian crow, which is extinct, gone extinct in 2004. Species that are most at risk are those that are limited specialists and widespread generalists. The generalists are found over a large geographic range, but within that range, they're usually rare or patchy in abundance. They're tolerant to a wide range of environmental conditions, flexible diet, weak symbiotic relationships, and they often do well in disturbed habitats. The general this distribution an example here would be of the blue damselfly, which is found in a lot of areas across the globe. Specialists have a very limited geographic range. They have specialized adaptations to one habitat and may have a tight symbiotic relationship with another organism. They are usually better competitors than generalists in the environment and that they are adapted to, and they are not as resilient to disturbance. Endemism is a concept that a species is found in a particular region and nowhere else. Level of, levels of endemism are high for areas that have been isolated for long periods of time, especially islands. And the dodo bird is an example. It was endemic to Mauritius. Where will most of the species going extinct? Where are they? And here is a global map of the 25 biodiversity hotspots where most species would go extinct. Hypotheses for the effect of extinction, the rivet popper is the theory that each species is important in its own small way. We lose one of them, like a rivet on a plane, and it happens a little bit, little happens, but the ecosystem weakens. We lose several species, and at some point the whole system fails. The other hypothesis is redundancy. Most species are superfluous as only a few are critical to their survival of an ecosystem. Species are like passengers on the plane. Even with only a few, the plane can still fly. The more complex the food web, the more likely we can withstand the extinction of any one member. So to know which one of these hypotheses is correct, humans either need to let the many species go extinct and see what happens, which is what we're currently doing, or learn a lot more about the ecology of biological systems. An example of a rivet popper system is that the sea otters eat sea urchins that eat algae such as kelp. And they are specialists. If there were no sea otters, there were no 
if there was no kelp, there would be no sea urchins, there would be no sea otters. Sea otters disappeared from the west coast because of overhunting for the fur industry. Sea urchin populations exploded. Kelp forests disappeared. Kelp provided a home to many juvenile fish. The ecosystem was restored after reintroducing the sea otter. So evolution predicts or required about 10 million years to restore the pre-disaster levels of diversity. So evolution cannot perform as it did in previous ages if natural environments have been crowded out by artificial ones. So we aren't able to evolve new species very quickly. It would take a massive amount of time and it did not have the open natural environments that occurred during the 10 million years time frame that we have today, we don't have those. So in summary, extinction over the Earth's history has occurred throughout both background extinction and mass extinction events. Humans are presently imposing a mass extinction event on the rest of the Earth's flora and fauna. And how many extinction events can the Earth sustain before life as we know it is irreparably changed is unknown. Here are some resources to look further on this topic.